Hey everyone, it's Tara with the Painted Cicada, and you are here with me at the Friendly Santa Mixed Media Painting Lesson. Um, for those of you who were looking for this the other day, I super apologize. I tried to let everybody know um, I had a total computer failure, lost everything, um, had to zip out and get a new computer, <laughs> order a new computer. I had it overnighted, um, but I did have to reschedule this. So uh, thank you so much for your patience. I apologize for the inconvenience and um, I still wanted to make sure that you got this uh, friendly Santa painting because I think he's super fun. This is actually something I did in my art journal several years ago and I really liked him so I thought I would revisit it. Um, the fun thing about mixed media and know this before we go in, absolutely everything can be changed or substituted depending on what you have. So if I suggest something or I do something and you don't have the exact thing, feel free to change it. That's the magic of mixed media. Um, so let's go over the supply list really quickly. Again, uh, feel free to substitute as needed. Um, so you need a, a canvas or a substrate, eight by 10 or nine by 12. I'm working nine by 12 today. Um, if you wanna make uh, Santa as pictured, uh, you need green, red, and uh, skin tone and white for acrylic paint. Um, I added uh, black and white paint pens. I've got a Posca black and white. I also have a black and white jelly roll here. Um, I suggested black charcoal. We're going to do some outlining and sketchy stuff with that. Um, if you don't have this, you can also use one of your paint pens. Um, a nice substitute uh, sometimes is a Stabilo All pen. You could use a Sharpie. Um, there's a million things you could use for this. Um, Christmas washi tape. So I do have some uh, that is, uh, shall I say, Christmas flavored. Uh, but you could just use, you know, anything that coordinates, um, white, gold, any pattern, black, um, red, green, whatever. Um, just something that kind of goes along with what we're doing. Book pages. So I just pulled out a bunch of stuff that I had laying around for scrap. I've got some old readers digest. I've got a sheet music book page. Somebody sent me these scraps once to use. And then these are some old printables that I had laying around. Um, one of them was Christmas. So it was perfect. So just some old uh, book pages, stuff with writing on it is basically what we're looking for. Stuff with texture. You could use a dictionary page. Um, you could use pages from an old book. Um, you could find printables that you have, whatever you want. Uh, we're just going to use that to add some texture in the background of all of our elements. Uh, fluid or gel medium. Um, it doesn't matter if it's uh, more solid or more liquid as long as uh, it's uh, a medium. Uh, we want a medium without any color. So it can be matte or it can be glossy. Um, it can be gel or it can be fluid, um, or honestly, it could even be Mod Podge. Anything to adhere, um, that's what we're going to use that for. Uh, we're also going to thin our paint slightly with it. Um, I suggested snow text or modeling paste. Um, I used all my snow text on a, a different lesson. So I pulled out some modeling paste. That's just to add a little bit of uh, fun, chunky texture to the white parts. Um, and it says any other fun materials you want to incorporate. So uh, just for fun, I pulled out some bubble wrap. I might add some bubble wrapping to the background. I like to do that. Um, I also pulled out my brayer. I might use this for the background, but um, if you don't have a brayer, you can always brush your background. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get similar techniques in mixed media. So don't stress about that. Um, another option, if you don't have a brayer, is just to have something that will scrape. Let me see if I can get my scrapies. So um, sometimes I'll even use, uh, this is just a piece of a spatula. You can kind of pull your paint around with that. So maybe I'll leave, let that sit out. But um, 
yeah, you can use whatever. And then, of course, kind of some standard options like water, paper towels, a palette to put your paint on, um, scissors, a ruler for straight edges. Um, I've just got a variety of paint brushes. Um, small, medium, and large rounds and flats are what I use the most. A heat gun and hair dryer will help you uh, dry as we work through the layers, but that is optional. Um, and then tracer and carbon paper um, if you want to transfer the printable or um, if you're able to print it, uh, you can just cut it and use it as a template. So um, these are just the originals that I drew out for you. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to move some of this out of the way. This so I can get started here. All right, so first things first, we are going to uh, get some fun stuff on the background here. So uh, just go through what you have, some book pages maybe. Um, we just want to get some random textures back there. So don't overthink it. We're going to go for about 75% coverage on the background. Ooh, on one of my uh, music sheets, I have this flower that would make a fun little thing to use for that tassel on his hat. I said about 75% coverage for the background so just you know cut out some pieces until you feel like you've got it mostly covered there and then maybe a few extra for good measure Alright, so once you feel like you've got those, this is what we're going to start using our uh, medium for. So I've got my matte gel medium, but whatever you've got will work just fine. Um, even white glue, honestly, if you struggle finding medium, um, glue is fine as well. And uh, what we're going to do is just put down some of this... Uh, busyness and uh, I'm going to add a layer underneath and then uh, make sure that it's adhered by adding a layer on top. So you want to use the medium both under and over your pieces. Don't overthink the placement of your stuff. Remember, we've got a nice uh, large Santa that's going to cover most of this. So I just play with the placement and have fun with it.
The only requirement I ever give myself is it really bothers me if I've got uh, words going sideways. I really like most everything to be um, easy to read with the eye. I feel like it makes it stand out a little more. Um, so I don't like to turn things, orient things sideways, but that's kind of a personal preference. So that's not even a rule. That's not even something you have to stick to. Once I get some stuff on here, um, I like to remind myself it's okay to overlap, so make things a little layered. That gives it a little more interesting visual appeal. just layer until you're happy and that's the very first step. And what I might do, just because I know that I have it, um, is I did find this printable that I had uh, printed out for something that I probably used a long time ago. Um, and it's got it's basically a Christmas flyer. So I'm just gonna rip this out and maybe put this on my piece uh, in a place that might be a little more obvious. I can actually probably even put it in two places. So if you have anything like an old Christmas card or just anything that might really add to the background, you know, with the word Christmas or maybe it's a Christmas carol printable or something like that, that is always something that's kind of fun to add in. Those little bits and pieces that make it match or fit a theme are always super cool. All right, so just make sure you've got a nice layer under and over with your medium. Uh, and that will ensure that everything is glued on well. Now, uh, it's not totally necessary that this is dry before you move on, but I'm just going to zap this layer quickly uh, to make sure I don't pull anything up. So it's still a little wet in places, but it's drier than it was, and that's what matters. Okay, just going to straighten up my area a smidge. And uh, the next thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to add some green onto this background. Um, and I'm going to thin this out a little bit with gel medium. Uh, so even really need to um, clean that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some gel medium. I'm going to get some green. Of course, whatever green you want to use is fine. I'm just adding this right to my background because we're going to spread it around anyway. So I'm going to mix that gel medium in there. That's going to give it a little bit of transparency. 
can always thin it with a little bit of water if you need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of spread this around. So you can completely paint the background with a paintbrush if you want to. Uh, but this is where a brayer or a scraper might be kind of fun. So we're just going for um, coverage on this background. Nice place for Santa to sit on top of. Scrapers are kind of fun if you have, you know, just a straight edge that you can scrape with because they uh, leave a very uneven background. And that's a fun look. Oops. So I am just going to kind of scrape this around. And as you can see, that gel medium has thinned out uh, that paint so that I can see some of these words, right? Um, and that's ideal. So this is basically the look we're going for. I don't need absolute complete coverage. I'm okay with some of that white poking through. I'm okay that I can see a lot of that texture and words and fun stuff. That's the point of putting it back there. So I really like that. That is a very fast step. Um, if you want to hide some things or get rid of a little bit of that background, you can always pull some of your green right from your tube or your bottle and then come back through and add in, you know, using a paintbrush or, you know, you can even use your scrapey tool. Add in some opaque layers. Whatever you want to do for your background. All right, now the next step I'm going to do, totally optional, but I pulled out some bubble wrap. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just bubble wrap even more texture on here. So um, I could just stamp this into the paint as it is and it'll add uh, some fun round circles. Another thing that I could do um, is add a smidge of white and paint it, you know, make this green a little bit lighter on the bubble wrap. Um, and then bubble wrap in some lighter green circles. You could also just take some plastic and smush that on there. That might add some texture. Um, if you've got a stencil, you could stencil uh, some fun stuff on the background here using green or uh, modified green, you know, just kind of a matching color. Whatever you want to do to your background, we're just going to kind of busy it up, right? So we added that paper, we added our green. Um, you can add some opaque places. And then I added a little bit of this bubble wrap stamp that was kind of improvised. You did not have bubble wrap on your list, but uh, any kind of texture that you have available will work. Even uh, sometimes a fun thing to do if you don't have um, a lot of texture tools available is just to uh, take something and kind of carve a word in. So you know, I could take the end of a paintbrush and I could write you know, Christmas and carve that in there. Um, Santa. Let's see. Elves. You know, just add little touches. That's kind of fun sometimes too. And it'll pull your eye um, 
to those areas. All right, I am gonna dry this again. I do want this layer to be completely dry before I move to the next step. So I'm gonna mute so you don't have to hear my dryer and uh, then we'll move on to step three. Well, step three is dry, we'll move on to step four. <laughs> All right, the next thing I'm going to do uh, is pull out my paint pens. And for this, I'm going to use my pasta, probably my black pasta. So on my original, I've just got um, kind of a straight edge uh, all the way around. And I added uh, just an off and on pattern. So what I'm going to do... First, I'm going to make sure this pen works. All right, there we go. Uh, up at the top here, um, if you don't have a ruler, just use the edge of a paper to get a nice, straight, even edge. Um, I am going to block this off. And so when I make a pattern, usually what I like to do is find my center, uh, and then I will mark off halves to keep it fairly even. I don't need to keep this perfect. But there we go. Let's see, I can even make these smaller. So I'm just making blocks. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of fill these in. And I'm just gonna sketch the fill. I don't want a complete fill. This is supposed to be kind of whimsical and fun. So don't worry about that fill being completely black unless that's your preference. And then go ahead and do that. Right. Right, so I'm gonna do the same thing along this edge. working background upwards as far as the layers go. So we're going to get some of this background finished. It may feel like these are finishing touches, but I like to get the background done so that we can layer and what we do next will appear closer. All right, so I am going to do this on three sides. Thank you. 
actually this time I think I'll do all four edges. I'll make it even. half of this border what I am going to do is I'm just going to add in some white circles here in the areas where I didn't sketch that black in this just adds a little more busyness to that bordered edge So that's kind of fun, right? So that's my edge. Of course, you can make any kind of design all the way around your edge that you like. Uh, what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to turn this sideways so that I can write, but I'm going to pull out. Um, actually, I'll still use this. Um, on the side of my sample, uh, you can actually see that up in the corner. Um, I wrote the word believe. Um, so I'm going to do that again. And I used my own handwriting, nothing fancy. So I'm going to start with this paint pen. All right, so very simply, I just wrote it, you know, in my own handwriting. I'm going to go back and just thicken this up a little bit. some serifs on these letters since I did that in the original. And then what I did just for fun um, is I used a smaller paint pen or you can use a gel pen um, and I just kind of made this a little sketchy. So came back through and added lines around this. Um, kind of just gave it a sketchy look. some swirls whatever you want to do just kind of make this a little sketchy and fun and then just to add a little zhuzh to it I am going to come back and maybe add just pinches of white This, my paint pen.
So even my word believe, it was just uh, written in my own handwriting and I kind of just went back and added some sketchy uh, multiple line dots, swirls, that kind of thing. And I just made it a little more fun. Um, now, even that is not the total focus, like Santa is going to be right here in the middle. So some of that's going to get covered up and that's okay. Alrighty. Um, what I'm going to do next uh, is let's work on our hat. So um, you are given some stencils. Uh, if you look at what they are, they're really not all that difficult to draw. Uh, we just want a hat design. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out one of these sheets of paper. Let's see, maybe for this one. I will choose this. And I'm going to take this template and I'm just going to cut it out at the same time. Right? So I don't need to trace it. I don't need to... I mean, you can use carbon paper if you want to, but I've just doubled up this layer. So I've got my tracer on the back, um, or I'm sorry, my book page on the back with some music. And I'm just going to make this hat shape by cutting both out at the same time. So that is going to become my hat. And while I've got this out, I can go ahead and uh, do all these little uh, shapes. So I'll cut out my face as well. different one for my nose but again I'm just going to take that sheet put it on the back and cut out both at once fit this beard. And I mentioned earlier that this lesson is actually one uh, that I am redoing from my art journal from a long time ago. In my original, um, I did the beard a little differently. So for this one, I made my beard a little more gnome-like. Um, that's kind of the trend lately, and I thought Santa could be a little more gnomey. He could have that gnome-like beard, kind of update this project a little bit. But you can certainly cut out any beard that you like if you don't like this shape. All right, so that helps us kind of find our Santa shape, right? Now that we have those pieces. And then the last thing we're gonna do, and we're gonna do this freehand, there's no template for it, um, is we are just going to use a piece of paper uh, and we need to cut his, the, the body shape out here. 
Um, I'm not sure that I've got a book page big enough, do I? Let me see if I can find another one. Lots of old printable stuff, so I'll just use this one. And so, what I mean uh, when I say we need to just kind of make him a body uh, is so here is the sample, just this red part here. And so, what I'm going to do is put this over the bearded area and just sketch it in. So kind of just, oops, give him a little shoulder on the left and a little shoulder on the right. And it doesn't really need to be all that perfect. We're just going to the bottom of the page. And your shape will look something like that. And you can see it's real sketchy and uh, that's fine. And I'm just going to cut around that line so I cannot see it. Once I get that body shape in there, I can adjust just a little bit, trim it up if I need to. Um, I actually like it just like that, so I am happy. So those are the pieces that we need. All right, I'm gonna move all of my scrappy paper because I'm not sure I'm gonna need any more of that. Put it to the side, maybe I'll use it, maybe I won't. Okay. So we've got these pieces now. Our background is pretty much dry. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna paint the hat red. I'm gonna put my beard, my nose, and my face off to the side. Um, and I also need to paint uh, the body piece red as well. So all I'm going to do is put this off to the side. I'm not going to paint it on. I'm going to paint it over here. Um, and again, my formula for this is just going to be red and a little bit of that gel medium. And I'm going to mix that together. That gel medium just gives it a little bit of transparency. If you're using heavy body paint, you can even just add a pinch of water. And so you can paint it on. You can use your scraper or maybe this time um, I'm just going to play with this brayer a little bit. Let's see what we can do with the brayer. Um, but the important part of this is just to try to move some of this paint around thinly enough. Woo! I got a little tingly. Thinly enough that we can see some of the pattern or texture underneath. And if you feel like you over apply your paint, uh, you can always pull it back with, if you've got a baby wipe, you can use a baby wipe. If you've got a paper towel, you can use a paper towel. So just to show you, um, you can kind of pull the paint back just a little bit if you aren't able to see some of that texturing. I can see most of mine just fine on that one, so I'm happy. 
And let's see, this one, maybe I'll just use the brush and just paint up top. So very different looks between the hat, as you can see in the, the brayer down there. That is fine. All right. So those are my two reds. The sprayer, I don't typically clean too much. I like to leave texture on there. It's kind of a fun thing to play with. All right, um, now we are gonna glue this on. So again, back with the gel medium. medium brush. This has got some green on it, so I'm just going to clean that off real quick. And these two pieces, the reason why I'm doing these now is these help me anchor uh, the rest of Santa. So um, I know this piece goes at the bottom here, so I am just going to add some adhesive right here and this dries clear so I can go over these edges and not worry about it too much. Um, if you use Posca paint pen like I do, know that Posca pen uh, is not waterproof. So if you go over it too much, it will lift. So just like we did with the other pieces, I'm just going to Add some medium right over the top here. Make sure that that Santa's body is glued on. If you go over the edge, just trim it off. All right, just whimsical, fun Santa. Okay, and then I know that this piece is going to go up here at the top. And I want to leave... Leave him kind of centered, right? Um, do you want a little space on that side? You know, you can always tilt your hat any way you want, but um, I'm going to add the adhesive to the back on this side here just to make placing it a little easier. And then my top layer of adhesive with my gel medium. So like I said, the hat and the body will help anchor the rest of the face. It'll help us figure out where everything needs to go. So that's why I like to get these two on first. All right, so next thing, we're going to do is we need to get this face put together here. So I am going to put this over here and get my skin tone paint out. And you can use whatever skin tone you like. I ended up having this warm beige and I might add a little brown to it. This is just a little light. Um, I don't like mixing up a skin tone. I just never seem to get it light. So I like to have a, a starting point. And then I am just gonna paint these pieces just like I did with the red hat. I'm not adding any gel medium to this. This time, I'm just going to paint it. And then, uh, just like I did before, uh, if you want to see some of those words through there, maybe you can 
tap some areas out. I like the transparency as is. You can make it more transparent if you like. And then the next step is, you guessed it, gel medium. Now, when I put Santa together, I want to leave um, an area just above his head, above his face right here. That's going to kind of be the, the fuzzy brim of his hat. So I'm going to place his face... Let's see. That looks good to me. And then his nose is just going to go centered at the bottom of his face there. And then we need to get his beard on. And I'm actually just going to put the beard on as is. Um, because the only color we use for that is white. And so once we've got his nose, we know where his beard goes, right? So we can kind of eyeball that and then put our gel medium under. And then over. Now, for the most part, most of my paints are not mixing. Um, most of them are dry. But if you have any, like I've got a little red on his beard, it really just adds character. So I wouldn't even stress too much about that, to be honest. All right. So we've got a good Santa start here. Want to do now is add some white for his fur edging and his little tassel. Now I found this little fun thing while I was going through my papers and I'm gonna make this flower into the start of his tassel uh, just because I randomly found it and I think it's cool um, but you can always just do yours with paint as well. But he's going to have a little flower tassel because I like to use things that I find. But if you don't have a flower to start with, the process is the same. I'm pretty much just going to paint over the top of it anyway. And that gives you gives me a little starting point. Okay, so I'm going to need white and we are going to start adding in some of these white parts. Um, I'm going to do this slightly differently than I did uh, before. So I'm going to get some white here and this is where I encourage you to use um, snow text or modeling paste. So I'm going to get some of this modeling paste out and I'm going to make this thicker. And so I am just going to mix that right in with the white so that my white is nice and chunky. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to start tapping my first layer in here. I say tap because I want it to be nice and thick. I don't want to brush um, stroke all of this out for the the fur, right? We want our fur to be nice and furry. We don't want it to have paintbrush strokes in it. Okay. 
And so I just tap because I feel like it makes that fun fur texture. And this is a little different from my sample. Um, I just thought this would be a fun way to make the fur versus just using uh, the book pages like I did the first time around. So, you know, certainly you can do it just like the sample or you can do it with uh, the modeling paste or the snow text or, you know, whatever kind of fun texture you've got. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. So I just add that, that furry area first. Um, so I get a nice layer on there and then I can come through and kind of layer upward. And since I'm using modeling paste and snow text will do the same, if you just tap and lift and you have a lot of paint on this brush, it's going to give you some nice peaks and texture. And that's what I'm going for here is peaks and texture. All right, so I'm gonna set this brush just to the side here. Um, I'm gonna reach for another brush and then I am just gonna add, let's see, I'm gonna do this with just a round and just regular white paint. Um, so for this, I wanna give him um, some eyebrows and his eyebrows are just gonna go kind of right here in the middle. They're gonna connect, Santa's gonna have a unibrow and this is just white paint. And then here on the side, I want his beard to connect upward. So I am just going to add some white along each side of his face to connect his beard. Not overthinking it, just edging along the side of his face there. And then for his beard, um, I want to be able to see some of this through. So what I'm going to do is add some paint and then I'm going to cover this whole thing with white and then I'm going to pull it back with paper towel. So I'm going to move fairly quickly so that it doesn't completely dry on me. So I cover that in white. And I'm just gonna get a paper towel and just kind of pull some of this out and just kind of adjust that beard so that I can see some of that stuff underneath. So here you can see some of that texture and that will dry textured like that. So I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to leave it right there till it dries on the tassel and the hat. And then I added paint to the beard and just, 
used a paper towel and padded. And so I lifted all that white up enough so that I could see some of what's going on underneath. And so this is the basic shape of Santa. Super easy. Um, and then, oh, what do we do next? Uh, we can do, while this is drying, I'm gonna pull out my paint pens again. Um, and I'm just gonna add some details on Mr. Santa. So the first and easiest detail are his eyes, right? So I'm just using a black paint pen. And I'm gonna add some two small oval eyes. Um, I think that's really all I need to do with my paint pen. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the background of his eyes. We need to add the dots of the eye. Of course, if it's easier for you to use paint, um, another easy way to do that um, would be to use the back side of a brush and dip it in white paint. So if you find that easier, you can make his little eyes that way as well. Either way. Uh, but what I want to do for most of um, the edge lines is I am going to use some charcoal and do some sketching. So um, I'm going to zap this with the dryer again. Um, I don't need most of the texture to dry, but it's helpful if that's a little dry as well. So I'm going to mute this. I am going to dry for about 30 seconds and then move on to the next step. Alrighty, Rue. So for this part, I am going to use my charcoal and I've got a medium charcoal. Um, it really doesn't matter if you're using charcoal, you could use gel pen, you could use Sharpie, um, but I like the charcoal because it's going to give us a smudgy effect. So I'm going to start by um, adding some charcoal lines around the edge of my hat and see, I'm just, I'm being real sketchy about it. I'm not worried about a perfect line here. I need to sharpen this a pinch. Once I get the outline done, what I'm gonna do is kind of Add a fold over here, some shadowing, because the hat does kind of fold over, right? And some fold lines for the hat where this kind of slouches. And then around the edge here, I am going to just add a little charcoal smudgy. But again, keep in mind, I'm being real loose and sketchy. I'm holding the, the pencil up towards the top or my charcoal up towards the top so I can be loose and free with it. 
All right, so I added that at the top. I'm gonna do the edge of his little nose because we need to know where his nose is, right? And then we've got his beard outline. And then with his beard, of course, you can add some sketchy beard marks, right? Um, and then around the side of his face, I'm just going to pull that beard with some loopy sketch lines. Uh, down to his nose and then maybe even some around here around Santa's unibrow you can do some around the bottom edge of that texture as well I've got some around the ball here And then I outline the edge of his body as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to take, this is the lid that I've got my uh, gel medium. I'm going to put a little gel medium in here. Mix it with a little bit of water. And some of these edges, I am going to use this and just kind of smudge out this uh, charcoal. It just gives it a little softer look and it also seals it in. So anywhere I've got charcoal, I'm just sealing that in with a mixture of gel medium and water. And it just kind of gives it a fun smudgy look. And this is another change that I made uh, from the original because the original I did with uh, paint pens and I just left it kind of as it was. But I think I like this smudgy look. So I'm going to play with this. And of course we can always go back and uh, add in lines on top if we want to. Uh, refine it or make very clear uh, lines, doodle lines. So I may do that as well. But right now I'm sealing in all this charcoal. And I'm not overworking it, but I am allowing this wet mixture to smudge this out a bit. So I'm doing all of the parts where I have my charcoal, all around the edges of Mr. Santa's beard. I'm gonna do the outline around his body. And then I'm gonna come back and do the lines I made in the beard as well.
Don't forget to go around his nose. around the tassel. So everywhere there's charcoal, we're gonna smudge that out. All right, so he is smudged and sealed. The beard, um, really, from here on out, it's some finishing touches. So what I'm going to do is dry this one more time. I know we've been drying kind of a lot. Um, so I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to use my gel pens and some washi tape to add in some finishing touches. So one more dry and then we'll move forward. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these gel pens. You can use a paint pen, you can use a Sharpie, you can use whatever. Um, and I'm just going to add some more of these squiggly lines around his beard here. These are just doodles, so, you know, I'm just adding curly doodle lines. You know, maybe he needs a little more around his eyebrows. Whatever you want to do. A little more now that some of this texture is dried, I can add some in here. Really, this is where you kind of make it your own. So down here, his beard's kind of straight, so I'm not gonna add it, make it curly. I might add a few sketchy lines in here as well. The idea is just to add um, some fun using a variety of media. Um, I am going to add in my washi tape so um, we can add some finishing touches. Again, I had Christmas washi tape, but you could just, you know, use whatever you have. Um, in my sample, I think I just used some dots. Let's see if I can find the end of it. There it is. This one here is small. It's some holly. But I am just going to add this right along the bottom edge. Maybe holly along the bottom. Oh, I've got a green one up. Should I use my green one? I'll use a green one up top. Okay. 
But the fun thing about mixed media is that we're adding these different layers. Um, we want it to appear like some pieces are under, some pieces are over. There's no right or wrong. We're just playing with it. You, know, you can even add more than one uh, piece of washi tape if you want to. This one's kind of fun, so maybe I'll add that on here as well. Um, you can, if your washi tape, depending on what kind of washi you're using, some will stick better than others. If you're worried about it peeling or lifting, uh, you can seal that in as well with gel medium. That is a trick you can use for washi tape. Oh, come on. So I might just to seal this in, use a little bit of this gel medium right over the top of the washi. Just to make sure it's not going anywhere. Then it's just finishing touches. So maybe you want to add some um, shading or highlight on Santa's face. So, um, you know, maybe I'll add a little highlight on his nose. Maybe he needs a little uh, pink on his cheeks. Uh, everything from here on out, you can just add some finishing touches. So uh, it is totally up to you. I'm going to add some some pink on Mr. Santa's cheeks here. Maybe a little pink on his nose as well. Um, what else could we do? We could add some glitter if you've got glitter. I am a huge glitter fan. Uh, so, hmm, where can I add glitter? Maybe I'll see if I've got some red glitter and glitter up his, ooh, I'm going to use this one. This is just cheap dollar store glitter glue, but I like it. I'm going to use this pink color. I'm just going to add some pink iridescent glitter to his body down here. So you can see, I'm just playing at this point, adding some finishing touches. Um, the idea behind mixed media is just to play and reuse some fun things and pull out all of those supplies um, that you bought and maybe don't have a use for. So you can always add more doodles. You can add sparkles. You can add, um, you know, other layers. You can add words. You know, you could cut out and collage some words on here. Um, so it's really totally up to you what you do with this. Um, but I've given you the bones and I look forward to seeing what you have made. So please share with me. You can always tag me at Painted Cicada um, on any of the socials and I will be able to see it. Uh, or an even better way to share um, is to join my group, the Painted Cicada's Art and Share. Uh, on Facebook and there's the address there. It's facebook.com slash groups slash painted cicada group. Um, I'm actually holding a contest uh, for December 2022 um, for people who uh, post their work. All you have to do to enter is post some of your work. Um, it can be work that you've created on your own or work that you've created with me um, and that will enter you to win. And I've got some fun free lessons uh, available for people who enter. Um, also, I've got a really fun uh, lesson that goes along with this uh, coming up for my supporters. And uh, it is a snowman that matches Santa. And that is happening um, on December 26th. So I would love if you join me for that. 
Um, again, it's a complimentary lesson um, to this that I had done in my art journal in the past and the snowman is super cute so you can check out uh how to join on uh, my facebook page it is only 4.99 a month and you get all my lessons and i've got some really cool stuff coming up uh after the new year as well so i look forward to sharing that with you um here is the information for that there. Um, obviously, there's no obligation to sign up to be a supporter, but uh, we've got that fun uh, snowman coming up that matches Mr. Santa here. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, shout out to those of you who are my supporters and gave me grace and patience uh, with this lesson uh, not being on time because of my computer flop. And um, Thank you to everybody who joined me on the replay. I can't wait to see what you made. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.